Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about biased branches. So modern processors use branch predictors to help keep pipelines filled with instructions. And they do a really good job at this in a number of different scenarios. So if you have, say, a branch that's always taken or one that's always not taken, a branch predictor can guess this correctly 100% of the time or very close to 100% of the time. Likewise, if you have, say, you know, a branch that's, um, you know, has a very simple pattern, like an alternating taken, not taken pattern, uh, branch predictors do very well with this. Uh, and that, you know, even with moderately complex to complex patterns, you may still see very few branch mispredictions. Um, where you, your, your branch predictor starts to you know, run into trouble or when these outcomes start looking more and more random. That's when you'll start seeing more and more branch mispredictions. Um, however, uh, just because your outcomes are random doesn't necessarily mean um, that your branch predictor will perform poorly, provided that these outcomes are still biased towards one side. So they're still, say, mostly taken or mostly not taken. Right? And that's what we're going to be looking at and benchmarking in this video. So let's go ahead and open up random.cpp. We've got a benchmark here implemented using Google Benchmark. And we're going to be focusing on two parts here. One is the um, random number or random outcome generation. And then the other part is the actual loop that we'll be benchmarking down here. So um, our random outcomes are generating using, uh, using this Stud Bernoulli distribution, uh, which gives us true false outcomes based upon an input probability P expressed as a decimal. So this is just the probability that our random number generator will give us a true outcome, where the probability of giving us a false outcome would just be 1 minus P. Um, so you know, for instance, if we pass in 0 here, uh, this means a random number generator will always give us a false outcome. So there's a 0% chance of it giving us a true outcome. Likewise, if we pass in 1 here, which would be 100%, that means we have a 100% chance of a random number generator giving us a true outcome. So a 0% chance of it giving us a uh, false outcome. So that's our always true case. And we're going to be looking at a number of different probabilities. So going from 0% all the way up to 100%, incrementing by 10 each time, just to see how performance and branch prediction is impacted as our branch is biased to different degrees. So in the case of you know always false and always true, those are our most biased cases. So our branch predictor should be working the best in those cases. Um, you know, and conversely, at 50%, right, this is the case where um, true and false have equal probabilities. So this should be the worst case for a branch predictor, right, because um, we have random outcomes and our branch is not biased towards, and these outcomes aren't biased towards one side. They're not mostly taken or mostly not taken, right? They're, they're just random with a 50% uh, 50 50 uh, chance for each side. Okay, so those are, uh, th that's the random outcome generation. Uh, so the only other thing we have to talk about really is the um, what we're actually going to be benchmarking. So where are we using these outcomes? So we'll create a vector of these outcomes. So 2 to the 14 outcomes, we'll stick in a std vector of bool. Um, and what we're going to do is inside of our main benchmarking loop, we'll go over all of these outcomes in a for loop. And then for each outcome, we'll check if it's true. If it's true, we'll just add some constant um, to this integer sync here, which is just an integer initialized to 0. So we'll either, you know, if the outcome is true, we'll add a constant to sync. Otherwise, um, we'll just continue on and check the next outcome and do this for all 2 to the, 40, uh, 2 to the 14 outcomes inside of this std vector of bool. Right? So very simple benchmark. If we ha start having a lot of branch misprediction, it should be very easy to see just from a performance side of thing, uh, things because we're doing very little inside this loop. So branch prediction um, and our branch misprediction rate should have a very large impact on performance. Okay, so let's go ahead and quit out of here. And we'll compile using G++. We'll turn on O3 optimization with mArch and mTune equal to native and link time optimization. So we'll compile and let's go ahead and run and let's see what the performance looks like um, going from 0%, so our always false case, all the way up to 100%, which is our always true case. And what we end up seeing, um, you know, rather expectedly, is that our performance is best at the tails, right? So at 0% and at 100%. Uh, you know, those are the cases where uh, our branch is either always taken or always not taken. So those should be the easiest for our branch predictor, right? And it shows in our performance. So it only took, you know, 13 uh, microseconds for our um, always 
uh, false case, and it only takes 11 microseconds for our always true case. And then you can see performance gradually gets worse and worse and worse as we work our way into the middle, right? That's when our branch becomes less and less biased towards one side until we hit 50%, which is the worst performance, right? Rather expectedly, because that's the case where our branch is not biased towards either side and our outcomes are random, right? And we can show this um, that you know, we'll have the highest branch miss prediction right here uh, by actually looking at the performance counter. So we can go ahead and use uh, perf stat, run a benchmark, and we'll run these kind of one at a time. Um, so first we'll look at our, you know, heavily biased towards the false sign. Uh, so, you know, probability of zero. And we see that, you know, only 0.66% of our branches were misses. So, you know, we're predicting correctly almost 100% of the time. And the same thing goes with our 100% case, right? Our always true case. You know, it even says, you know, 0.00% or basically 112,000 branch misses for, you know, 4.8, 4.9 billion total branches. So pretty much 0% uh, branch misses, you know, and as we work our way, say, backwards towards the center, you know, we go to 90%, you know, it increases slightly. So it goes from 0 to 2.56%. And our performance, you know, goes way down. So we go from 11 microseconds at the always true case to 20.9 microseconds. So almost double, um, you know, as we become mostly true, but not 100% true. Uh, likewise, if we move back to 80. We see our branch misprediction goes up again. So now it's up to 5.75%. You know, at 70, as we become less and less biased, now we're at 9.78% of our branches being misses you know, down to, uh, you know, our 60%, so we're even less biased. Now we're, we're all the way up to 12 point, you know, 5% of our branches being misses until we get to, you know, 50%, what we'd expect to be the worst case, um, where, you know, 13.7% of our branches ended up being misses, right? And, you know, we can even see as we work our way down the other side, right, our performance starts to go back up, right, because we start seeing uh, fewer branch miss uh, predictions. So if we go to the 40% case, we start to get biased towards the false side. Um, now we're, you know, only 12.89% of branches being misses. You know, we, you know, step this down to say 20%, uh, percent, so we're even further biased. Now we're only at 6.74% of our branches being misses. And, you know, like I say, go back down to say zero, clear that. Um, and, you know, we get all the way back down to the most heavily bias case, the always false case, we're again back down to 0.66% of our branches being misses. So you can see, you know, if we go ahead and run this just, you know, kind of total all the way through again, we end up with this kind of bell curve looking uh, performance where, you know, our performance is worse as we get to the non bias cases. And then as we go out towards the edges, right, we become more and more biased, and our performance gets better. So that's going to go ahead and do it um, for this video, but maybe asking yourself, well, what do I do with this information of bias branches? So, you know, you know, one example of something you can do with this is you can improve code scheduling um, by, you know, giving your compiler hints so it can schedule, you know, understanding if something's mostly taken or mostly not taken. And if we go ahead and look at the Linux kernel uh, source code um, on this site, and I type in, you know, likely, which is a macro in here, and we go into the macro and say kernel.h, you can see in here that has the likely macro that's using this compiler, um, this compiler intrinsic, this built-in expect here. So you can basically give hints to your compiler about whether or not a branch is mostly taken or mostly not taken. And this will affect things like code scheduling. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. If you're interested in the source code, you can find it at my GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch. So if we go under repositories, then under miscellaneous code, um, you can find bias branches, and here's that random.cpp. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.